Hey for Everly's, it's Maddie and Everly, and today I'm going to be drawing my life. It all began when my mom and dad met at Blockbuster. My mom worked there and my dad frequently rented video games. He had just moved to Texas from Seattle, so he made his move by asking my mom to show him around DFW. They ended up dating for three years and got married in August 1999. In 2002, my mom got pregnant with a baby girl, me. I was expected to be bored on May 18th. In April 2003, my mom cleaned her whole house for her baby shower. She had her baby shower on Saturday. Sunday night, she went to bed and told my dad it felt like someone was kicking her in the back. On Monday, she started bleeding, which obviously isn't normal during pregnancy. She went to the hospital to find out she was in labor at only 34 weeks pregnant. They postponed her labor for a little less than a week. She ended up getting pneumonia in the hospital, and she gave birth to me with pneumonia. I was five weeks early, so I was really small. Five pounds to be exact. I had jaundice, and for a five-week early baby, I was pretty healthy. Me and my mom stayed in the hospital for about four days. Every night, I would sleep in her hospital bed with her. My mom ended up quitting her job right after she had me so she could be a stay-at-home mom. I had always been a creative kid. My mom was very patient with me and would sit on the bed with me while I would peel my crayons. At 18 months old, I could draw Big Bird, and my mom thought it was normal because I was her first kid, but everyone else was shocked at how good I could draw. I was always really close to my mom. When I was about two, I would cry when someone other than my mom would look at me for too long. In 2005, I got a little sister. Her name was A.P. Although we had the same parents, we looked nothing alike. She had dark hair and features, while I had bright blonde hair and blue eyes. As a toddler, I made up my own language because I had speech problems. My mom was the only one who could understand me. Other people thought I was speaking Chinese. At four, my mom started taking me to speech therapy for two hours every day. Every time my mom would drop me off, I would tell her to play High School Musical really loud so everyone thought I was cool. While I was in speech therapy, my mom got pregnant with my little brother Stone. He was born in 2007 and came out looking just like my sister. By the time I started kindergarten, my speech was a lot better, but every morning before school I would get really nervous and get an upset stomach. My mom ended up being a room mom with two other ladies, and I ended up becoming best friends with their two sons, Ethan and Caden. Most of my playdates were with them, so I learned how to get along with boys. Around the end of the year, my teacher suggested that I was tested for the Gifted and Talented program. I was accepted into the program, even though I did not go to the premier preschools the other kids attended. Growing up, I loved to read and write. I created a book series with my best friend at the time, Lori. We wrote little stories and drew pictures. Although I loved to write with my friend, my anxiety was progressively getting worse. I would run back to the car when my mom would drop me off, and it also physically affected me, and I would have stomach issues. At the end of my first grade year, my little sister, River, was born. She looked more like me. She had huge blue eyes and light hair. In the middle of second grade, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona for my dad's job. He got a big promotion. But he worked nights, so he would sleep during the day and work at night. And I ended up seeing him less and less. I remember every day before he would leave for work, me and my sister would sit in front of the door before he left and give him hugs. I started school in Arizona in the middle of the year. There were three other Maddies in the class, so they called me Maddie L. A play on Maddie L. I loved learning, but I hated school. Almost every day at school, I would have an anxiety attack. I would run out of the classroom crying, hide in the bathrooms. I began seeking out help from the staff, but that only made it worse. I would go to the office and tell the office ladies that I couldn't be in class because I was having anxiety, and they would pick me up kicking and screaming and drag me to class. I also couldn't go to recess because I had emetophobia, and I was scared someone around me would throw up on the playground. My art teacher, Miss Sarah, would let me go with her to teach a kindergarten class art during my recess period. This began something I looked forward to every day. Around this time, I developed a disease called trichotillomania. It's an impulse control disorder, and it caused me to pull out my hair, eyelashes, and eyebrows. Barely anyone heard about trichotillomania, because only 1-2% to 2 of the world suffers from it. I felt like a weirdo, because it was as foreign to me as it was to other people. I started seeing a counselor, and she officially diagnosed me with trichotillomania and severe anxiety attacks. I was only 8 years old, and they started me on medication. I started taking a medicine called Prozac. It really helped me, but I still had anxiety attacks and trichotillomania. Although I struggled with these, I was still very social. I had tons of friends and was very confident. Fast forward to fourth grade. My dad wanted his day job back and I wanted to see him more, so we moved back to Texas. I started school there. I was in fourth grade and my anxiety attacks continued. My teacher was an author and she taught me to love reading more than I already did. 
She also helped me with my anxiety attacks and didn't get mad at me when I had them. On the first day of school, I met a girl named Mariah. She became one of my best friends. She had a twin brother named Caden, and we were all really close. I would sleep over at their house all the time, and we had a lot of fun. They were really accepting. I had another group of friends, too, Kelsey, Ashlyn, and Sapria. I carried these friends over to middle school. While I was in fifth grade, my mom and dad weren't happy together anymore. They fought more and more, and they ended up getting a divorce. They tried so long to stay together for our sake because they had four kids together, but they just weren't happy anymore. The summer after they divorced, my mom started talking to her old friend, Sam. They had known each other since third grade, and they fell in love. After only eight months of dating, they got married. Sam didn't think he could have kids, but it turns out he could, because my mom got pregnant with my little brother, Slay. I was so excited to have another baby in the house. I started middle school that year. My anxiety was still really bad, but the shorter class periods helped a lot. I was friends with all the popular girls, and my friend group stayed the same throughout middle school. On Valentine's Day, a boy named Kyler sent me a picture of Homer Simpson with a sandwich. I actually dated for about a week, but it was just too weird. We stayed best friends, and he introduced me to memes and totally corrupted my sense of humor. We faced him almost every night for hours, and he was always there for me. My life remained pretty much the same for a while, until 7th grade. I still didn't have eyelashes, so I started wearing fake ones. I got made fun of a lot for this. Eventually, I was able to overcome my trichotillomania, and I grew my own eyelashes. I still wore fake ones, though, because I didn't have many. At the end of 7th grade year, I got really depressed. Things happened, and I ended up in an adolescent psychiatric hospital. I stayed there for about a week. They helped me get my medicine adjusted and cope with my anxiety and depression. I was a lot happier after I finished treatment. When I went back to school in 8th grade, I had less and less anxiety. I started making friends from other schools. I started hanging out with three people a lot towards the end of the year. Grace, Hodo, and Wims. We all got along really well and we were good friends. On New Year's Eve, we were at a party and we were all sitting by the fire and talking when someone showed me a picture of a boy named Isaac. I thought he was cute, so I snapchatted him. We started talking and eventually started dating on January 14th. He was my first boyfriend that seemed like an actual relationship. Things happened and we ended up breaking up. I was heartbroken, but I got over it. About two months after we broke up, I found out I was 14 weeks pregnant. I was scared at first because I was only 14 at the time. I ended up growing fonder and fonder of the idea of having my own child. People would call me names for being pregnant so young, but I was able to ignore them because I knew keeping Everly was the right thing to do. On January 5th, 2018, Everly was born. I was so happy. I knew the moment I held her in my arms that being a mom was my calling. So that's pretty much my life. Now I'm 15 and Everly's almost one. Everly saved me from so many dark things and she brought brightness into my life. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Bye for Everly's.